Okay, now we're ready to, I'm ready to show you the lengthen by center, but the visual lisp version. So here's the name of my command. And uh, let's run this line by line to show you what it does. So first let's select our new line. Let's, uh, well, sorry, specify length for new line. Let's, uh, let's do something uh, prominent, one, 111. Now let's select the object, there we go. Let's uh, grab that one. So one important thing to remember is that when we're working with a visual lisp, we got to convert the object to a to a visual lisp object. It's just an auto lisp entity right now. So let's run this. Now, if you're like me and you code very sporadically, very seldomly, remember uh, you always have the advantage of using this uh, VLAX dump object command. So using that, I can uh, display all my properties. And of course, with this line, we're just going to be working with properties, not really any method, so to speak. I'm just going to give you a quick reminder here that if you do, uh, as I mentioned, we're not working with methods, but if you add the true optional argument to that VLA, VLAX dump object function, now it's going to display the methods as well. And I showed you this uh, offset method previously, right? Okay, so this, I'm not going to spend too much time explaining this, but this is very similar to the code you saw for the regular list, except I'm using, using the VLA get, as in VLA get a property, and the object name. That's it. AutoCAD database line, or ACDB line. So I can use that to make sure the user selected a line. And of course, same thing, if the user selects, uh, since I'm using the same function, if the user s selects a point or misses, the, the command just crashes. But uh, if you leave a comment, I'll, I'll figure out a quick solution to that. There's, I don't really have to figure it out. There's just multiple ways to solve that. But um, I'm already taking way too long with this, this little tutorial series. So that'll have to be in a, in a different video, unfortunately. Okay, so um, I'll just go up here quickly. You notice there's some read-only properties, such as the length and the angle. And the reason for that is uh, the way that this uh, object works is it allows you to input the, st <clears throat> excuse me, the start point, the end point, but it doesn't allow you to adjust the angle. So let's say this was some sort of wacky line where the end point was read only. The start point was a property you could adjust. And the angle was a property you could adjust, as well as the length. That would be a pretty wacky object to deal with. So obviously you can think uh, of all the situations you'd be in, you're most likely, it's basically just simplest to give the user the ability to edit the start point and the end point and make the angle and the line's length read only. So there are objects that you can, in fact, adjust the length, the angle, but uh, a line isn't one of them. So anyways, that's way too much time I spent talking about that, but just be aware of what you're dealing with when you're looking at these properties. Oftentimes, if you see a property that's read only, don't give up can basically access or modify it indirectly. Obviously, we can uh, we can make any length or any angle we want by adjusting the start point and the end point. So, hopefully you're not completely confused now, but let's uh let's keep walking through the code before I do in fact confuse you or uh, lose some of my audience here. So, anyways, let's uh set user line angle using the VLA get angle function. So we got something funny going on here. So we have VLA get start point. I get a variant. So how do I work with a variant? VLAX variant value. I get a safe array. So let's set that as a variable just so we can uh, 
mess around with it. Let's go to inspect. Okay, so we have a safe array type double. The double just means the the type of number is a double, and that means it stores a certain number of decimal places. Um, that I won't get into too, too much. There's some very good tutorials online regarding that. Number of dimensions, one. So it seems a little bit um, unnecessary that this point, for some reason, is stored as something called a safe array. And a, a brief explanation of a safe array is that it's a list of lists, or kind of like a table. For example, if this had more than one dimension, like there could be multiple points in this safe array. And, and one example of that might be a uh, polylines point list, right? Where it's gonna have multiple points. But in this case, we just have one point embedded in this safe array. So don't uh, don't worry too much about that right now, but uh, with Visual Lisp, there's all these, uh, and one reason a lot of people are deterred from using Visual Lisp is there's all these functions that they, they output like a, a variant value or a safe array, and those can be a little bit cumbersome to work with. One reason for that is that, of course, AutoCAD is not coded in Lisp. It's written, I believe, in C++. So when we're using Lisp, we're given the option of accessing, modifying, creating these entities, but it's not what the code is suited for. It can, it can just do it, right? Like, you know, you can have a a Jeep CJ, it's great for off-roading. You can still get groceries in it, but it's, it's better as an off-road vehicle or a toy, not a daily driver. And Autolisp is just like that. It gives you access to so many different uh, different parts of the AutoCAD API, but it's it's in some instances, it's not the most efficient way of doing it. So there are various commands and workarounds for dealing with these variants and these safe arrays. So, um, here I'm just, I'm just showing you how to get the the start point by getting those uh, by accessing the safe array itself, right? So I can, I can run this line. So I'm using the VLAX safe array get element. Member zero is the first index when you're dealing with lists. So I'm going into the first dimension. I'm getting the first element. So the safe array, I'm not going to explain it right now, but if there were multiple dimensions, I'd have more arguments here. But don't uh, don't let me sway you in the wrong direction, because I'll actually have to do a demonstration on that before explaining it, or you'll just be a, I'll just confuse you more than help you. So, anyways, I've I've extracted a point list from that. So when you're dealing with a uh, autolisp or visual list, particular in particular. So I use the, what did I do? VLA get start point, but I'm using the VLAX get function here, user object selection, and then I'm applying the start point property right there. I'm gonna show you something really neat. So that went directly to the list, that the point has a list, right? It's not a variant, it's not a safe array, it just outputted a list. This is very important when you're dealing with a, uh, when you're using Visual Lisp, you really want to know your way around the Visual Lisp editor. So I can ins inspect this, right? And now I know it's a point, because when I inspected this, remember it came up as a safe a safe array, and before that, it outputted a it outputted a variant. So different functions output different types of variables. So when I use this VLAX get in this situation, the start point it shoots out, a, when I use this on the start point, it shoots out a list, which is way easier to work with. So was this teaching you this all a waste of time? No, because remember, we got to put that start point back and it has to be in the same format as this variant value. And there's something VLAX dash variant. So I got to move that. So when you when you write this code, there's um yeah when you write this code there's various ways to check what type of the variant is. But also in this case, when we're dealing with points, you saw me use that VLAX 3D point command, that does all the work for us. But when you're dealing with a coordinate list for polylines, other things, uh, dynamic block. 
parameters, stuff like that, you really got to be aware of the variant type and you're going to have to create your variables, declare them as the proper var variant type. But that's uh, getting way, way ahead here. I'm not going to go, in, go into explaining that. Just, just know that you always have the option of inspecting your element. You're not, you're not in the dark here. Okay, so where were we? I think we, uh... Okay, so our old start point is set. Our old endpoint. So set Q half old distance. So 0 0.5 distance, old start point, old endpoint. All this is doing is finding the center line of our line. Now I get my center point using the polar function, just like before. So as you can see, the code is different but similar to the regular autolist code above. Okay, so now I'm going to set the new the new start point. And just a note here, remember what I said, this won't work. Remember the variant in the safe array? So let's overwrite that variable and let's use the VLAX 3D point to make our new point. So I'm going to copy and paste that down here in my Visual Lisp console, hit enter. Now I'm given the variant again. And that variant, see that 8197? Notice how this one is also 8197. These aren't the same thing. Because one will be the old start point, and one will be the new start point, but they're the same type of variant, and that's what's important. Okay, here's our new endpoint. And now let's just put our new uh, our new start point and endpoints. And I'm going to go to the To the model space, the command line to that's all there is to it. So this function behaves very similar, and quite honestly, the difference between the visual lisp and the regular auto lisp in a command like this is very subtle. So in this situation, I don't think I'd really I don't know which one I'd prefer to use. It depends on I guess in this situation, which one you're more comfortable with. Okay, so I'm just going to check this code quickly. Now I'm going to load it. Not into things anymore. So anyways, for this particular lesson, I think that's all. That's where I'm going to cap it off. I am working on something a little bit more interesting, which is uh, the reason behind the, the title to this little piece of code here. Just playing with attributes, playing with dynamic block properties. Once I, once I show you that, you can literally do anything you see on my site. You notice I have some list demonstrations that I don't really explain how to do. Um, the reason I haven't explained those yet is because I find when I make my lessons more complex, my explanations, uh, the quality goes downhill there, there. And you might have found that with this lesson. So this isn't so much a tutorial as it is more just giving you an insight into what you can do with the code and the difference between the visual lisp and the regular lisp, of course. But yeah, so uh, check back for that. And along with this, I'm actually going to start showing you how to, how to use dialog boxes in Autolift's code as well. So anyways, uh, thanks again for watching this uh, this little tutorial series. I hope you found it informative, useful, or at least you learned something uh, something new and useful.